Hi, welcome to episode six of Ask Thomas George. Okay, so today I'm actually out of the studio. I'm in a hotel room in West London where I'm working on a few projects this week. But let's just jump straight in to this week's questions. So the first one's from Cam. How do I get my music out to be heard? Any advice you could give to anyone as a beginner in music production? Okay, so first of all, I'd say is to collaborate. If you collaborate with other musicians and then the people on their fan base will hear or will see your name and hear your music as well. If you're featuring such and such or if you're featuring them, um, that's a really great way as well. But Good artists aren't going to have you feature on their tracks unless your music's pretty damn good yourself. So I'd say is first of all, just concentrate and just producing really. Just get the basics down, learn how to compose, learn music theory, learn how music works, learn instrument well. Um, nowadays a keyboard's obviously a very good one to learn for DAWs or guitar's still great, or even drums. Just learn the instrument really well, learn how to make music great and then start thinking about collaborating. But yeah, if, if you're new to music production, I wouldn't even think about getting your music out there to be heard. I'm all thinking about making really good quality music. So I'll concentrate on that first of all. And then once you've done that, yeah, try and collaborate as, with as many people as possible. Um, yeah, you can also do blogs, V blogs as well. If you want to do video blogs, something similar to this. Uh, written blogs, podcasts. If you're really into, say, I don't know, East European EDM, you could do like the East European EDM podcast, something like that really, just to get your face and your name out there and then more people will check out your music. But yeah, learn, learn how to produce yourself really well and then collaborate and then maybe expand into other platforms as well, not just SoundCloud or Facebook, maybe more yeah, YouTube or blogs or vblogs, that kind of thing. Okay, Dave, how do you record great vocals? So Jack, underneath this question's pretty much answered it. Great singer, great lyrics, great mic, great preamp, great converters, which is, yeah, it's pretty much right. But I'd also say to record great vocals, you have to have the singer in a really good headspace. It's not just about getting a really nice mic and a nice preamp. You have to have the singer really relaxed. I find, especially with singers and other musicians as well, it's all about them being in the right headspace. If they're not in the right headspace, the recording is not going to come out very well. What I do when I record a singer, even though the studio I use has got its own private like vocal booth, I don't use a vocal booth. I put the singer in the mixing room with me, just so then we can kind of have a laugh, vibe of each other, have a bit of fun really, and get the singer relaxed. So when they do sing, it, they're going to perform the best they can. I know a lot of singers that set up the vocal booth the best they can, they get the best high quality mic, and then they're just super serious throughout the whole session. Right, let's do this take again, let's do it again. And that really puts the singer in their head and they're a lot more nervous and tense. But I find if you put the singer in a room, it's a bit like having a laugh with one of your friends, when you kind of relax and you might hang out with your friends, you just have way more fun. So I just kind of, yeah, just, just befriend the singers, have fun with them, have a laugh, but also you get the job done, but make sure the singer's in a great mood and then the performance comes out a lot better. Um, like a couple of days ago, I did a photo shoot. I had one of my friends, um, Dan Parkinson, take the photos. And me and him have known each other for years, so we have a really good, a real good laugh when we meet each other. And we are kind of messing around, having fun. So when I did the photos, I think they came out quite natural and quite relaxed. But if I was with a really serious photographer, and they would put me in certain poses and being really strict, I'd probably be really nervous and rigid and the photos probably wouldn't look very natural. I think it's a similar kind of thing to recording. So yeah, of course, you've got to have a great singer, great lyrics, great mic, great preamp and all that. And obviously, you need to be able to comp the mixes. So if the singer does a really good verse on one, a really good chorus on another, you need to be able to blend them together so you can't really tell the different mixes um, or different takes. But yeah, I'd say get the singer in a great mood, a great, head, great headspace, rather than thinking about all the technical elements. My man Dimitar, okay, of course he has a vocal video or a video where you can focus on cheap, great sound and plugins. So what's happened with me and Dimitar is he's a German EDM producer and 
Uh, we've been working together. I've basically found him a really good singer, which is Jessica Rose for his new track. And I've recorded the vocals for him and he's mixing them. And he's kind of struggling with pitching the vocals. Unfortunately, Dimitar, if you want it to sound good, you've got to spend quite a bit of money. Um, I don't really know what the cheap ones are. I don't really use them, I'm afraid. But Waves have actually got a sale on right now. I don't work for Waves. There's no affiliate deal for me and Waves. I just really like them. I think they're really good. So if you check out the Waves website, there is the Waves Tune, which I've never actually used before, but I'm presuming it's similar to Melodyne. And that's on sale at the moment as well. Or you can use, I know Dimitar used Logic 9. If you upgrade to Logic 10, which I know you don't want to do, but it, it is worth it. And um, you do get the flex pitch on there as well, which is really great. There's a lot of stuff you can do with that. I really like the CLA uh, Signature Series. I think that's awesome. It's so good for vocals as well. That's actually on sale on the Waves website. I sound like I'm working for Waves, but I don't. Uh, the other one I like is the Waves Doubler. That one's really great to get a big double sound. But the CLA vocals pretty much does that as well. Um, yeah, I don't really know any cheap ones. Bite the bullet and get the good stuff, really. If you want your vocals to sound good, like that track you've done, it's sounding great, we've got a really good singer. I record it in a really nice studio. So don't like skimp on the production, on the mixing, get the good stuff. Or send it me if you want, and I'll, I'll pitch it for you. Um, I think it's the pitching that you're struggling with, really, because like Jess sung it really well, but the kind of EDM sound you're after, the vocals have to be 100% pitched. So Melodyne's also great. You know, Everyone knows Melodyne, so have a look into that as well. But cheap ones, yeah, I'd say, yeah, if you, if you pay peanuts, you're going to get monkeys, really, so get the good stuff. But the Waze one's on sale, and they, they sound really good. Luke, the process, I've taken stems and used them for backing tracks, i.e. claps, extra keys, parts, vocals, etc. Um, I'm presuming this is for your band, Luke, because uh, I know your band. Um, if it's someone else's music, taking stuff like claps and kick drums, you can do that. But if it's more actual clips of music, you can't do that due to a copyright. And also, you can't really just isolate certain parts unless you get them to send you the stems over. Uh, but if it's your music, um, there's two things you can do. One is either play along to a click track. Um, I know you're a drummer. Um, the drummers I've worked with before, they don't really like playing along to a click track. It's up to you. I personally, if I was drumming along, would not want to play along to a click track. But yeah, so you can either play along to a click track and set up the session and say logic and you just put it under certain sections so you know exactly when that drum fill comes in, you've got the percussion part or whatever, the pad comes in and the chorus, the backing vocals comes in the chorus. Or alternatively, you can trigger these yourself. The main ones I'd use is Main Stage and Ableton Live. I personally think Ableton Live is better than Main Stage, but it is harder to use. Main Stage is really simple. Ableton Live, you will need to go through a few tutorials really to, to get the grips of that. So you could you could have, if you've played the drums, for example, if there's a section on the chorus, you could hit a pad and that could trigger um, the samples. If it's little stuff like little uh, percussion parts, you won't really need a click track. Or if it's just pads in the background, as long as you, I know you're, you're a really good drummer, so if you're playing in time to that, um, yeah, you won't, you won't need a click. So you could either have, yeah, the two options, play along to a click and you have your own little mini mixer that the click gets sent to you, just you, and the, so you even need in-ear monitors or a pair of headphones and the other mix gets, without the click, gets sent to the front of the house. Or alternatively, the harder but better option is trigger it all um, with either Ableton or main stage. I've actually got Ableton, Ableton APC controller, which is really awesome. So you can just trigger samples with that. Um, if you're playing the drums, it might be quite hard to do that unless you set up a little MIDI pad. Or if you've got a keyboard player in the bands, um, get him to do that. It's probably a bit easier. That's what I'd recommend anyway. Okay, Peter, how to finish a track or to make builds and rises. So for builds and rises, that's all about automation, really. You've got to automate the synths, the pads, the volume. Or if you're feeling a bit lazy, you can use a Vengeance sample pack or other sample packs, but I like the Vengeance one just because it has all the the like the rises and the, the like the yeah the rises and the pads already made really so you don't need to make them yourself it is better to make them yourself but you're feeling a bit lazy just dragging like a, a vengeance riser which is just pretty cool really it's really great 
uh, how to finish a track. So to finish a track, I actually find this really, really difficult. I find it super hard to finish a track. What I do is I actually send off my tracks to a mastering engineer to master them for me. I can master them myself, but the main reason I do that is because I'm never going to finish them otherwise. I just, I just can't finish a mix. I just slowly mess around with it. I don't know. I, I just have to keep on going, even if it is done. If I send it to a master engineer, they master it. It's done then. I'm not going to touch it. It makes me finish it. Um, for mastering gear, it's Ozone 7. It's awesome. Or if you want to use Outboard gear, the finalizer, it's awesome as well. But I'd recommend, yeah, finding a friend or a professional master engineer and just getting them to do it, really, which is, uh, yeah, will make you finish the track. It depends really, I know a lot of people, they, they get the track done, boom, they finished it, but for me, I really find it hard and I have to get someone else to basically master it for me, just so it's finished. Shopa, my man. How to create music around a vocal? Does it require music theory? And the answer to that is yes. <laughs> no, um, well, you can do it by ear, Shopa, but really, you've got to know your theory. Like, why are you producing if you don't know your theory? It just kind of annoyed me really, these guys that, oh, I'm a producer and you, you don't know, really know how to play an instrument, your theory well. You can't run before you can walk. Learn your theory, it's the best way to do it. There's different types of theory. I grew up learning the ARBSM, -B which is kind of the classical theory that we do in the UK. Yes, yeah, so it's just all classical harmony. And then I moved on to learning jazz harmony and jazz theory. And then that, that really gives you a really good understanding of music and how music works. But of course, there are a lot of producers and musicians who just do it all by ear. But if you have a good basic understanding of theory and then you do it by ear, it's really going to help you. You really do need to know about composing, songwriting, theory, and how to play an instrument well. Like if you can play the piano well, you know every chord, every mode, every scale, it's going to be a lot easier than if you're just messing around and just pretending you know what you're doing. So yeah, have a look into the ARBSM music theories. Um, you can do it online, I think. Yeah, you can do grade up to one, and eight's the highest. Let's go through some of that, really. We'll have a look into jazz harmony, jazz theory, and it will really improve your music. Okay, Andrew, how to download free plugins. Um, the only, okay, for Ableton, if you go on the Ableton website, there's free plugins on there. There is, of course, ones you can buy, and they're all quite cheap on Ableton, really, a lot of them. Or you can download a few of the free plugins. Uh, for Logic or other DAWs, I'd go to the official websites to download the plugins like Waves.com, for example, rather than just finding like some dodgy one online because you might get viruses and stuff like that. So yeah, I'll go to the real, um, the official websites and just go through there. So um, for free plugins, to be honest, the free plugins aren't going to be that good normally. I downloaded one called Camel Crusher a while back, which is free, which is actually really good. It's a distortion. Um, I actually watched a Martin Garrix uh, tutorial online about how he made animals and there was a camel crush on there. I thought it was actually really, <laughs> really good at the time and uh, I got it for free on that, like legally. So just have a search through um, and go through the official outlets really rather than just going off the dodgy websites. But yeah, if you can afford it, don't work for Waze by the way. <laughs> go on the Waze website right now, there is a massive summer sale. Like some of the plugins are reduced. Like CLA Classic Compressors is $200, reduced from $600, which is pretty good. And the CLA ones are awesome, they're so good. Yeah, and stuff like the Abbey Road Collection is, yeah, like a third of the price. So yeah, check that out, really, because, like I said before, if you pay peanuts, you get monkeys. So if you, if you want the good stuff, really, generally, it does cost more money. Think of, think of it as a long-term investment. It might cost you a couple hundred quid or dollars, but... Your music, is sound, your music is going to sound so much better. It's like a microphone. If you buy a cheap, rubbish microphone, it's cheaper, but it's not going to make your voice sound as good. So think of it as an investment, really. Anyway, that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed the answers. If you've got any feedback, please leave them in the comments below. Remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel because this video actually comes out earlier on YouTube and you can find it a little bit earlier than other social media outlets. Yep, so thanks for watching and I'll catch you next week ready for episode 7 of Ask Thomas George.